Hey, Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because Because the the drinks drinks are are on us. us. Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose. We are so happy you joined us for happy hour today. I am so excited for today's episode. We have one of our good friends and someone who a lot of you might know, Miss Kobe Jarman coming on to the pod. This is a much anticipated guest. I feel like I say that every guest we have, but this one, like legit people ask for it every week. Highly requested, our Kobe girl. Yeah. So we're so excited. We're going to chit chat with her. We're going to dive deep and reminisce on the glory days a little bit with So Sharp and Ladybirds, but also just kind of like talk about navigating life post-college and careers and adulthood and all that fun stuff with our girls. So we're excited to bring her on. Um, but of course, let's do our little shindig, some catch up. Um, what do you have in your cup tonight, Rye? Tonight, you're going to die. I'm drinking what we were drinking at Kenny Chesney, and I made it for the Happy Hour Club. It's like the coconut rum with the pineapple. So good. Wait, I'm s- I am have FOMO that you're drinking that. It was so good that it was dangerous. Like We were drinking it like water because it tasted so good. Yeah, I ca- that was when I was recapping to other people about the... Um, the concert and just the trip in general, I just kept saying how impressed I was with his rum and how good the drink was. Is it just as good today? Like, is it just as good as we remembered? Yes, of course. Oh my gosh. I need to get some and remake that. It just, it screams summer. So are you going to save the deets for the happy hour club? You got to tune in. Yes. Tune into the happy hour club for more details, but just know this drink is so delish. Rose, are you like a huge coconut girl? I love coconut. Okay. I don't know why I thought you didn't like absolutely love it, but you loved the cocktail. So that makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) But even if you don't love coconut, I think you should try it because it's like, it's so good. Yeah. It's just scream summer. And if you like, for some reason, didn't like it with coconut, they have a lime and they have a plain one, right? I think so. There are so many options. I knew there was lime. So I think lime would be a perfect swap if you, for some reason, didn't love it, but I know they will. Oh, I'm so excited to see it on Happy Hour Club. Yay! Well, what are you drinking tonight? Um, I am still being so boring because I um, I keep like forgetting to think about it beforehand. <laughs> and I literally said last week I'm going to be better. This is just a great poppy with Chobani sweet cream. I mean, sounds delish. I it's know it's so delish. Good. It it is, and I just like crave having a poppy. It's like cracking open a cold one at the end of the day, but it's poppy, you know? Yeah, cracking open a cold one. Love and it. I took my straw out because I feel like it's so my glass straw on in the wine glass is so clanky danky. <laughs> I, it, I, when I listen back on the episodes, I hear it. So I'm sipping straight out of it like it's wine. Sometimes when I'm listening to the episodes, I like hearing when our like ice is swirling around. It's like I don't know, nice little ambiance. Yeah, it makes it feel like we're actually at happy hour. Yeah, because we are. Because we are. And we have a special guest today, if you're watching the YouTube, um, obviously uh, Kobe, but Rin <laughs> is so snuggled up. Um, you can't even see... Now you can see my my pants, but before you couldn't. Um, he is so... He's such an unbothered king right now. Wait, he is so snuggled. He's stealing the show. I know. It's so sweet. And he's not... like He cuddles, but like not this intense, so I'm loving it. Oh. And he just got I his hair cut, so he's extra soft. He looks so handsome. E. And truly got a haircut. <laughs> this, they're on the same timeline. Yes, they are. They're mm-hmm. so cute. They are. We don't deserve dogs. I'm obsessed. No. I know. Me too. So you were saying there's a th- big thunderstorm going on over there? Yeah. Huge thunderstorm. Wind out of control. And right when we were logging on, I lost power for a second and I was like, no, this is not the day to lose power. (laughs) Like we literally can't record without power. So everyone just fingers crossed um, that I don't go silent (laughs) because that means I lost power. (laughs) Yeah, no, we can't have that. Can you like hear it happening still outside or is it lightening up or like lighting up? What's lightning? No, I can't hear it right now. Okay. Maybe it's getting better. Because I I only hear you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. These things really do block it out. Um. But okay, well, we hope that everything stays great over in Pittsburgh over there. Thanks. I'll let you know. Okay. Um, so what do you want to chat about today? 
Well, I think we owe everyone a recap of the Kenny concert, don't you? Yes. You know what's crazy? It kind of feels like so long ago. No, like I hope I remember. I know. Okay, so hmm, where do we begin? Okay, so we... I just have to say, like, it went by so fast, but Mm -hmm. I feel like we were everywhere all at once. Like, how did we have time for everything that we did? We were on the floor and then we were like in the secret bathroom taking TikToks and then we were in the pit locker room and then we were backstage and then we were up in the concourse getting drinks. Like, I feel like it was the longest concert ever. We did a million things. Well, probably because there was 18 acts. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, no, we were everywhere. It, yeah, it was like a blink, but also felt like a long time from the time we got to the tailgate. Like think back to us making our cocktails in the hotel room till the casino at the end of the night. Oh my gosh. Are you stretching your calves? <laughs> you guys, I wore like heel boots, not like the slouchy heel boots. They weren't cowboy boots, which are a much more comfortable boot you can really boot scoot and boogie all night in cowboy boots oh yeah these like they were deaf they were a block heel so it was nice but my lord by (laughs) i mean i was doing tuck jumps all night basically (laughs) why were we jumping beans (laughs) literally we just were jumping the whole time because we were so happy to be there (laughs) we were and Oh my gosh. It, like I was in so much pain after I, <laughs> I couldn't walk by the end of the night. And if you're a germaphobe, you'd be sick at me. I was walking the streets of Pittsburgh and in a casino with just my socks on. Rose had to throw away her socks. <laughs> I did. They were disgusting. Um, and no one like said a word like <laughs> your, your parents, no one was alarmed that I had no shoes on. Like we all just, just accepted that no, there's Rose, no shoes, <laughs> no shoes, no shirt, no problems. <laughs> yeah. I was just living up to Kenny. Um, what was your favorite part? Of I don't the day? know. The whole thing was my favorite. It was so fun, but I have to say, I think I know who my celebrity crush is now. Mm. <laughs> yes. We unlocked a new amazing crush. Um, Zach Brown band. Yeah. We were like dying over him. He's a hunk. He is. And if you guys are anything like me, I remember him from like when he was extremely, not extremely, but like pretty overweight and was like always wearing like a beanie. Yeah, I didn't. That was not the Zach Brown. No, Zach Brown. Or sorry, that was not the Zach Brown we saw the other week. No, he came on stage. We're like, whoa! (laughs) He was jacked and had veneers and like husky, and he was so patriotic. Yeah, he like brought out um, a marine on stage for this one part of Chicken Fried. And we were freaking out. Rose took a video and I ruined it because I was screaming so loud. <laughs> and no, and in the video, the one girl in front has an 18, like eight, 180 ounce Vizzy <laughs> that's crunched in half that she's like holding up. <laughs> and it just bothers, like your screams don't bother me. It's just the crunched Vizzy that kills it for me. The XL. But yeah, he was so good. We were like in love with him, but I think he's a problem. We were like looking him up. He's mm-hmm. been divorced a couple of times. Yeah. 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 He is definitely a problem. And he like, he knows now like his glow up is awesome for the eye, but like he knows he is good looking now. Yeah. So he's fun to look at and like no, see live. He has so many good songs and. Like, he's so big. He did not need to be, like, a headliner for Kenny. I feel like he just did it because it's so fun. Yeah. And, yeah, I feel like he was having fun. We were having fun. It was so fun. And then between every act, we would go and refill our um, rum drinks. Yeah. Which, wait, we should talk about the vibe room. That was fun. That was so fun. So, you guys know, when you go to concerts, it is just so hard to get a drink it's like such a commitment you want to get almost like two or a really big one because you don't want to miss out on the concert well we had the ability with blue chair bay rum to go to what's called like the vibe room and it's basically wasn't it everybody who was invited by someone who was a part of the production of the concert whether it was like the people who set up the stage down to like someone who knows kenny 
Yeah. Like I was asking Brittany, our friend from Blue Chair Bay Rum, how, like how much are tickets to the Vibe Room? And she was like, no, you can't buy tickets. You have to be invited and like know someone to get into the Vibe Room, Mm -hmm. which was really interesting and cool because they had a fully stocked bar of Kenny's rum. So you literally just go in and like pour your own drinks and there were chasers and there was like a bathroom. Mm -hmm. There were backdrops with like photo shoots. So it was really cool. And Yeah, we like kind of chilled in there for a little while. Um, Rose took her shoes off there too <laughs> to let the feet rest, which was nice. I did. I really did. No, the vibe room was amazing. And it was cute how they made it like beachy theme. Like you felt like yeah. you were really catching a vibe. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was a cute idea. I never really... I mean, I'm sure that happens at a lot of concerts, something of that nature. But first time up for me. Me too. Yeah. It was so cool. It was so um, cool. What else? Um, I don't know. I just feel like we were like dancing through the entire, like we, we truly thought we were the main show at Kenny. Like oh, we, we were, were running through the, the floor <laughs> and so many people, I had so many DMs like, yeah, I saw you guys running around on the floor. I'm no. like, I'm so sick. Wait, main character energy for why did we think that? Also, I didn't tell you this or maybe oh, I did. No. But one of my HR managers for work said she saw me at the Kenny Chesney concert. No, there's just no way. I'm kind of embarrassed. We were acting just like so carefree. Yeah, you would have thought we went to like the most random city and like we knew no one and no one knew us. You know how like you can kind of act more out when you know no one knows you? No, we ran into that girl from high school cheer. Oh my God. I ran into so many random people that when I think back, I'm like, did I actually see them or not? Like it was so random and we were doing Irish jigs (laughs) to our seats. Like why? We absolutely were. So the, the thing is, is like we were already feeling good before we even stepped foot on the tailgate. Yeah, that's yeah. The end of the night's a little blurry. (laughs) A little bit. I'm like, I remember at one point I'm like, I need, I need to have something different. This blue chair bay rum isn't even hitting me. And I was absolutely feeling incredible, but it truly felt like I wasn't drinking. It tasted like water. Like it was going, it didn't taste like water. It was so good. It was going down as if it were water. No, it, it tastes like, like coconut water. Yeah. It was no, so good. the first, so blue chair bay rum, let us go on to the tour bus and gave us drinks, which was incredible because we were burning alive in the out on the tailgate (laughs) because one it was so hot and two um everyone was like grilling and smoking like doing the smoker and so i mean oh my gosh we were burning up and so when we got to get on the tour bus i think it was a mixture of just having air and being out of the sun and then they handed us this drink and we thought they like forgot to put the alcohol in like dead ass. I know like that sounds like we're being, no, it was, it was actually crazy in that moment. We knew like, okay, we're going to be drinking this all night. It was so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Should we talk about the video? <laughs> oh my God. It's guys, everyone is shitting all over us. Okay. So before we went to the concert, we were in the hotel room and we took this video, which is a trend. We didn't make it up. Like, oh, it's a trend that people did. are doing. Lord. <laughs> and <laughs> it's crazy, like, how mean people are being to us. I'm just, like, how do people have time? Like, it's crazy to me that people actually press send on some of the comments. I It really doesn't, doesn't bother me because I think we've just been around on social media enough to know that it takes like a special person to say what they're saying. But I didn't think the video was like that much of an issue for some people. They're like, I'm trying to think of some of the things these people are saying. Um, oh, I know us, too. About okay. me. <laughs> everyone, once one person picked on me, then everyone started to pick on me. Someone said... <laughs> Oh, there's the annoying blonde again. <laughs> no. Uh, I why was why were people saying mean like like there are comments on there saying the blonde and <laughs> Riley looked so cute. Someone said blonde should have stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like, you know what? Fine. I'll stay on the video next time, guys. No, that was so rude. I thought, I mean, I'm trying not to be biased, but I thought we looked fun and cute. Like, we were just trying to have a good time. Like, fucking relax. Sorry for my language, but like... Sorry, we had a, we did a little dance and got a little tipsy. No, people are literally up in arms. They said, "Go home, your kids are hungry." Excuse said, me, we don't have kids. <laughs> they said, "Washed up thirty year olds trying to be relevant, and classic." <laughs> I said, "Okay, I'm not thirty yet." Fuck. No. <laughs> if you guys are looking for some entertainment, go to the video, the reel on Rose's page, and read the comments. It is, I mean, people are just. They hate us. The TikTok too. Like pick your poison. Oh, I haven't even dove into the TikTok yet. Gosh. I don't like go on TikTok a lot to like read that kind of stuff. But I every time I go on Instagram, any notification I have is only for that video. <laughs> well, it's got to be up to like 2 million views by now. I know. I'm like, you guys, like it's, it's literally people are like, oh, you think this is so cool. I'm like, we didn't even make it up. Go on we TikTok. Did. It's literally everywhere. And we don't think we're cool. You're just being silly, having fun. Like, leave us alone. Yeah. I... <laughs> Blonde should have stayed home, got me. That's so rude. <laughs> but they were saying that you looked like Katherine Heigl. Some people. I, I've, I've been getting that a lot recently. That's a really good compliment. I can't tell if I see it or not. Let me know what you guys think. I guess I do. Like maybe how you look that day. Cause I think yeah. she wears her hair back a lot, but also love your outfit today. Sorry. That was a side. Thanks. You're giving Britney Spears today for me. Oh my gosh. Denim on denim. Yeah. Sometimes I just never know what to wear when we're filming. This is like so random. No, it's so cute. I'm literally, Thanks. I've worn both of these before. I need to go on like a little shopping spree for the pod. I know. That's what I mean. Like we used to, I feel like we used so into our outfits. I know. I, I just have to say, if you're watching, like I'm really, you know, like those certain podcasts filming, you're like, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling how I look. You know? I think you look so cute. Um, thanks. But I'm, you know, I'm just not feeling it. I'm really like watching this and seeing that one, these headbands just don't work for filming. I don't think. Two. I just need, I need new. This is just, <laughs> it's blah. I've, we've all seen this. I've got to just get to the store. This is insane. <laughs> I don't, why are you so mad at yourself? I'm so mad. I'm just like so disappointed with my look. <laughs> I think you look so cute and comfy. I am comfy. So, um, thanks, but I love your outfit more. Thanks. We also, <laughs> we didn't even talk about our new lights. Oh yeah. Look at them. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. We also are going to be, it's going to be even better next week. This is just our intro for our new yeah. lights. Oh, also, before we get into what's in our cart, we can tell the people that we are getting our footage back from our photo shoot. Oh, yeah. It's so cute. It's so cute. And we're getting like our video footage back too. <laughs> so you'll, I'm excited for them to see some of the cute stuff, but we have to obviously hold some of it in for a little bit, which is always hard. Yeah, I know. Those are like my favorites too. I know. Of course. And there's like so many of them. I'm like, people are going to be sick of us. Prepare to be sick of us. Yeah, we need to use that audio for sure. Um, well, do you want to get into what's in our cart or did you want to share any, like, did you have a oh. fun weekend? I wanted to say over the weekend, I listened to Luke Combs' new album, Fathers and Sons. Tell me why I was crying like the whole time. I'm not a father. I'm not a son. I don't have a son. Like <laughs> it made me so emotional for why? Like, what did we do to deserve this man? No, Luke Combs is the purest, sweetest, most angelic man in the world. And it's so emotional. I put on like three songs. And I just think it's going to be one of those albums where so many songs just like go right out to like parents, like some of those classic ones that you hear all around. But I mean, mm -hmm. my Lord, I was not prepared, but love him to death. Love him to death. I was not prepared for it at all. Like his lyrics just are insane. Mm -hmm. And the way he like ties it all together and like does plays on words. I know. And like it really made, I guess I was emotional because it's like you think about your childhood and like the way you view your dad when like mm -hmm. he's like, he says he's 10 foot tall. He's like Superman. I don't know. Just it was, 
I love the album so much. I know. And I also love the one um, where it's like about, I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one where it's like, he thought his dad was like always leaving because yes, but it was because the dad was going because he was like working so hard for, Oh, that one kills me. Wait, have you listened to, I think it's called take me out to the baseball game or something along those lines. I don't think so. No, it might be the saddest one on the whole album. Shoot. You have to listen to it. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because the first time I was like, Oh my gosh, this is so sad. Were you sobbing? Like I was not sobbing, but tears definitely were. Did it make so? Were you more so thinking about it in terms of you, like your dad to you, or like you and Kate having a family one day? I feel like a little bit of both, like for different songs, different things, mm-hmm. but just something about his voice and like the way he sings it. Like oh. he could say one word and I would just ball, you, you know, know it, like it's one of those albums. It is. His voice does something. It's just like healing. I don't know. He's so yeah. good for uh, like our world. We really need Luke. I know. Thank you, Luke, for doing the <laughs> Lord's work. Honestly, we got a salute. <laughs> Luke I and the like, Dance Moms girls get the salute. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, we have like, we've kind of moved on from justice for and we're on to saluting. <laughs> saluting our <laughs> troops. We've got a hell of an army. DM and Lukey. We do. Oh my gosh. I love DM and Lukey. Wow. What a combo. Um, yeah. So highly recommend listening. It's probably going to be uh, all over for the foreseeable future. Great summer tunes. Get you in your feels. Yeah. And like, I can't, Im- like I'm emotional. I'm a girl. I can't imagine like a father listening, mm-hmm. like thinking of his son or like a son listening about his dad. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Crazy. No, I agree. Before, like on the realm of music, have you heard the song? You've probably seen it. I feel like it's pretty social media popular, but it's by Gabby Barrett, maybe? And it's okay. Growing Up Raising You. No, I never heard it. Oh, right. It's so emotional. I cry and I literally don't have a child. It's nuts. I cry because I think of... My sister, I think of my sister-in-law. I think of when Ryan and I have kids. I think of Katie. I think of Blaine. It's so, listen, you'll cry. I know it. Okay. Wait, it's what's it called again? Growing Up Raising You. Okay. I'll listen when I'm in the mood for a good cry. You know those songs where you're just like, I know it's going to make me cry. Let's play oh, it. it'll do it. It <laughs> will do it for you. If you guys need a good good tearjerker song, throw it, throw it on after you listen to Luke. Love. Well, what what else? <laughs> um, that's really it. I had a pretty mediocre weekend. Oh no! Everybody oh, no. has to see Inside Out too. Oh yeah, I never saw Inside Out one. <gasps> <laughs> really? <didn't> that? <laughs> no, that is a problem. Well, how do I watch it? Disney Plus. Okay. Do you have Disney Plus? I have my sister's login. Hopefully okay. she's not listening. Well, you can use mine if she kicks you out. But okay. Riley, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> I feel like you're actually mad. No, like, what the heck? Is it because Kate doesn't like animated or what's the problem here? I don't know. I'm I'm not just like, I'm not really a movie girl. Would Kate like it? I mean, I don't know. I feel like he might not because it's animated. So why do you like it? I love animated movies. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, it's it's so cute. It's like the first one is all about like what happens in your brain. Like it's your emotions and they're like all animated characters like being and the girl's name is Riley. (gasps) Stop. Oh my gosh. Oh, I feel like that's going to make me like emotional. Is it sad? Well, the first one's like cute. It's she's like growing up and she it's so cute and creative because it's I don't know the creators who made the movie. It it like takes you through different parts of your brain. And it's like, here's where your long lost memories are. And like her imaginary friend when she was a baby comes out and it's like growing the pillars of like what makes her her in the first movie and how they like navigate the different emotions. But the second one is her becoming a teenager and 
like new emotions come in and like anxiety comes in and envy. And like, it's so sad because you see like, as you get older, like sometimes joy has to take a back seat because. Oh my God, stop. I'm I know sad. it's so, it's so cute. Like I think the second one has like even deeper meaning, but I just highly recommend watching it. So okay. cute. Like feel good. It's not like deep like or, or it's not like heavy by any means. Yeah. Okay. That'll be my homework for next week. Yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And like I said, I think you'll connect because of Riley. Okay. Yeah. I mean, gosh, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I'm just, we're getting each other in our feels. Honestly, justice for Riley. I feel like that's never main character energy. I know, right? She's your I love. Like, I know. Maybe that's why it like hits home too. Like <laughs> Riley, you know? <laughs> wow. Okay. I'll watch okay. it. What else did you do? That's really it. Just kind of like a low-key weekend, good food, Father's Day, and gearing up for some travel. But what about you? I saw you went to Omni. Oh, yeah. My dad went into golf at Bedford Springs, which was where I got married. So it's like an hour and a half from where we live. Um, I didn't golf because I was like the fifth person. And I was like, I'm not dying to golf. And I would just hold everyone up. So I met them afterwards for dinner. And it was so nice. And I think my dad had a really good day. So it's all that matters. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that looked so fun. I'm glad the weather held off till today. Yes. Oh my gosh. You're right. It was like the most gorgeous day. Actually all week this week, it's supposed to be like 90 degrees, which is unusual for Pittsburgh. This. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's giving Florida. I know my poor grass is getting brown. Oh, you got to water extra. How's your, how's all your stuff that you planted doing? Good. I'll have to send you photos of my flowers. They're thriving. I want to see them. I got to live vicariously. I'll show you. Okay. Any birds in the bird bath? Um, yeah. So they're, well, I've never seen any birds in there, but they're like feathers. So I know they're using it. Wait, that's so cute. Yeah. And it's like really pretty. Like I like it. It's so pretty. You should put a little picture on your Instagram of it. (laughs) Okay. I I just think it's so cute. And it's like by flowers, right? That you have down there. Well, I had to move those ones. They weren't doing good in that spot. Okay. I had to revive them. Well, yeah. Send me pics at least. Okay. Okay. Do you want to get into what's in our cart? Yeah, I do. Okay. So my cart is kind of boring. It was like a restock type of week. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, I'm running low on Armra, which is never a good thing. So I'm going to actually restock the blood orange. I've been like kind of, I've been having the plane every morning and I've been craving the blood orange since I ran out. Okay. That's so... Really interesting because I'm kind of still on the unflavored, but I'm craving that new like juicy peach one. That sounds good too. Wait, should I do blood orange or juicy peach? I think juicy peach. It's so summery. Okay. I feel like there's no way it would be bad. No, I think it'll be so good and you can always get blood orange after, you know? Okay. So I'm going to do that. Wait, what's our code again? I need to use it. (laughs) Do 15 girly. Okay. So do 15, going to get my arm raw for a little restock. And then I also just restocked on my Wella shampoo. Are you still loving it? Obsessed, right? I'm, I'm hooked. Okay, good. I'm hooked too. I'm restocking and they were having this like bundle deal at Target if you ship it. So not in, not in store. Is but it, it done? Was like, I don't think so. Oh, I'm grabbing it. I, it was, um, shampoo, conditioner and the mask. Like the Ooh. conditioner mask um, for $50, which is like a really good deal. Wait, did you, do you ever use the mask? I feel like you yeah. use a different brand. Oh, you do? It's my favorite one. Yeah, I've tried a lot of other ones, but I use it. So what I do is I do shampoo, conditioner, and then I put the mask in. I'll like shave, do everything else, and then I'll wash it out before I get out of the shower. And it just adds a lot of moisture. Oh, awesome. So you do it after conditioner. It doesn't need conditioned after the mask. No. Oh, okay. Well, if it's active still by the time this airs, like when you do your link for the cart link, you can like link it on Ulta and stuff, but try and link the deal too. Yeah. No, I want to because it's such a good deal. Yeah. Oh my God. Is it the big guys or the small? Small guys. That's fine. Yeah. I have the small right now anyway. 
Um, and then, oh, I also am out of my pa- like face powder that I do after foundation. Um, it's the It Cosmetics Pressed Foundation Powder. And I swear, like I've bought it so many times because it really like minimizes pores. It gives you that like mm. airbrushed look. And I don't think I'll ever stop wearing it. Like it just works so well with my skin. Um, I t- think I do shade medium, but I will link that too. Okay, wait. This is interesting because I'm running out of a lot of makeup. So can you tell me, so you do liquid foundation. Yeah. Then that? Yeah. And then when do you do the Laura Mercier or like the say? Dab, dab, dab. The concealer? No, like the tr- the setting powder. Oh, the powder. Yeah. Um, okay. So I do liquid foundation, then my it pressed powder. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do like, um, concealer under my eyes, like to brighten. Mm -hmm. And then after I do the concealer is when I do the powder. Okay. So you still need, cause I'm almost out of my say and I'm like, should I get say again? Or I didn't know if that it would, it doesn't suffice. Like I still need my setting powder. Yeah. Okay. But I still might try it because you know, I was telling you, I don't like how oily my makeup wears throughout the day. So maybe that it would help it. Yeah. It really does mattify. Okay. I'm in. So I'll link all of those restocks, but what's in your cart? So my cart's pretty boring as well. I figured even though I just shit on my headbands, I was going (laughs) to link them because they are, they're really nice for the summer, especially after you, like if you have curly hair like me and you don't want to style it, you were like, your hair was in the water or something. Um, I like to throw them in as something other than slicking back my hair, wearing a hat before hair wash day. And I'm kind of in a weird routine right now because I got my hair fixed. So it was washed, but now I need to make sure I'm on routine for my travel. Yeah. Like it's kind of hard. So I have to push it out a couple days. So I'm going to link that. And I'm also going to link the link to these boxers because they come in a bunch of colors. And I just feel like I wear them so much in the summer that I think now that it's warm everywhere, some girlies may want some cute boxers. Um, but okay. So happy to say I finally bought the double wear foundation. It's been a long time coming guys. Everyone give me a clap. Claps for us. (laughs) Um, and while, while I was there, I tested out the rare beauty lip tint oil. Have you heard of it? No. I just kind of like saw a couple videos on TikTok and it basically is different. There's different shades, but it's supposed to be like a one, basically the whole day of your makeup, the tint will stay. So you have like a tinted color on your lips Cute. and then you can put like lipstick or a gloss or something over it. And I feel like that's perfect for the summer when you want to do minimal, but you kind of still want to feel put together. And so I tried out the color and I'll link the color because I really did like it. And I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, Of course, it didn't look as good as the girl on the TikTok. Um, She was like a little bit deeper skin tone than I was. So I don't know if that's why it looked so good on her. But I came home at first. I was like, no, I'm not going to get it. I'm not sold on it. And then I came home a couple hours later and my lips were still tinted. And I kind of was like, wait, this is I kind of love it. Um, so I'm going to link it cause I'm thinking about getting it. Um, which also made me think about that little like lip stain tint that people put on that I talked about a couple months ago. Wait, that's what it reminded me of when you were just talking about it. Yeah. So I think I'm going to decide between one of the two of them just because I really do think I would use it a lot with like a clear gloss this summer. Um, just kind of like that rosy peachy look, um, do you think that's still in the summer? That like sun yeah. kiss, strawberry. Okay. Um, so I'm going to link them. I can't decide which one I want to get. Um, but the reason I was like, no, I'm not going to get it is because if you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, I ran, I lost my summer Fridays. So I was going to get another summer Fridays, which I thought was more important than like a lip tint. But I've been seeing that Refi uh, Clear. Have you ever used Refi? No, I haven't, but I've heard of their brow gel or sculpting yeah. thing. Yeah. I like their packaging and I don't know, their products seem legit. Um, this one has like a cooling tip on the, on the end of it and it's like a totally clear gloss. So I thought with a tint and that mm-hmm. gloss, that could be like a good everyday type of, um, situation. So I am, I'll link the whole, all the lips and this outfit, but that's all I got. Wow. Loved that. I was actually going to ask if you restocked your summer Fridays yet. 
No, I didn't. And of course, when I was in Sephora, they had none. Of was, course. Why do they never have any in stock? Never. And um, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to just get a different... And they didn't have Refi. It was at the Sephora, like a Sephora within Kohl's. So it wasn't like no. a full-fledged... Kohl's. <laughs> I, I told Riley that I apologize because <laughs> I, I really gave her crap for going to Kohl's and going to Sephora, but I went in and it was kind of fun. <laughs> It was kind of fun. It was. It was like so weird that you can like use your Sephora points and it's just like in the middle of the store. I don't know. It's so weird. Yeah. I know. There's like old grannies going to Kohl's and then there's you going to Sephora. Yeah. And I did browse around after and they had like cute Calvin Klein like bras and I was, I mean, I could have spent a lot in there. I know. Kohl's like has a little bit of everything. I never realized. Yeah. Like good appliances, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, so yeah, that is, I'll let you guys know what I end up doing, but I'll link all the lip products. Of course I'm talking about the lip products. I feel like I'm always wanting lip stuff. No, I feel like it's, we use them so much, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Well, should we go get our guests? Yes, I'm so excited. Okay, let's do it. Today, we are sitting down with Kobe Jarman, who you might recognize from So Sharp. Hi, Kobe. It's so great to have you. Hi, girls. It's so great to be here. I'm so excited. Yay. Oh my gosh. I love this because it's been so long since we have all been together and it feels like we're hanging out. Yeah, I, I know. Kobe, you are a much requested guest here at oh, Drinks on Us. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So I'm choking. Hold on one second. <laughs> Got too excited so for our guest. I know, like, this is so on brand for the three of us. Like, something <laughs> always happens. I think the last time we were together were, was for your wedding, Rose. Wow. Oh, my gosh. That's almost two years ago. That's not okay. So I know. Okay, so we're plan- planning a girl's trip after this wraps. Yes, 100%. Literally. Um, so of course we're going to ask you some awesome questions. Like Riley mentioned before, you guys probably know Kobe either through social media or from Ladybird, So Sharp era. And obviously we're going to dive into it. So don't you guys worry, but of course, Kobe, before we get into the questions that we curated for you, um, we have to ask, what do you have in your cup tonight? I am drinking a very large glass of champagne because it is needed. So it's a very great day. So Cheers. So it's a good, it's cheers. a good drink, like a celebratory. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cheers. Cheers to that. Virtual lady. cheers to Kobe. Yay. Yay. Okay. So like Rose mentioned, we have a bunch of really fun questions for you. We put a question box on our Instagram and we got so mm-hmm. many submissions. So we just kind of grabbed some of the best ones. And so let's just get into it. Yeah. So first question, this one's kind of funny, Kobe. You are very straightforward and tell it how it is. How do you handle people who can't take it? Aw, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I I hate that for them. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I just grow tough skin. We're 97 years old. Like you should be able to hear the truth by now. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are some people that like my mom always told me, like not everybody is wanting to hear the truth, even though they're asking for it. And so there are some times where I'm just like, okay, I won't go too straightforward. Like I'll maybe not sugarcoat it, but if like I know that person's like my straightforwardness is a lot for them, I'll maybe like dial it back or like be a little bit nicer about it. But like at this big age, just get over it. I also feel like, if someone, like if you vibe with someone back, mm-hmm. like you know that they like you for like, you have no sh- bullshit to you. Like you're yeah. just straight up. So I think to me, I mean, I know everyone's different, but it's kind of refreshing that, you know, like if you're vibing with someone and have a friendship with someone, like they like you to your core because it's not like you're faking anything. Right. And I'm like, it's not with every situation that it's like, because I think when people hear like, I'm very straightforward, I'm very to the point, like no BS. I think they think I'm just innately mean, but it's like, I love the pomp and circumstance about life. I don't think there needs to be that when I'm telling you what I need to happen or what needs to get done or like how Mm -hmm. I feel. Like, I feel like we can be very straightforward because then 
it's like almost like you start to talk around your feelings or like talk around the issue just because like you don't want to hurt that person's feelings. But it's like sometimes I say this all the time, like sometimes you need to get cussed out to realize like <laughs> life's not all beauty and green. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, for no, sure. I feel like people appreciate you for that quality about yourself. Like I know I can always come to you and you'll mm-hmm. give me advice that like maybe someone would sugarcoat something just to make me feel good. And mm-hmm. I feel like everyone needs a friend like that for sure. Yeah. I feel like when you have sisters, you're not a yes man. <laughs> you have got like if you had if you have sisters or just siblings in general, but mainly sisters, like if you've gotten in a fight with your sister, you know that like you can say whatever to anybody if your sister like forgives you and you get over it. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm having like vivid flashbacks to college, <laughs> whether it's like with guys or like in learning routines and just getting like the straight truth from Kobe. Why am I thinking about Riley when we got exited from the room because we <laughs> couldn't do the side hair real trick? Wait, I, I thought it was a head spring. <laughs> or head spring. I think it was, yeah, it was a head spring. <laughs> she I exited remember. us. I was like, Maybe next time. <laughs> we'll work on it at night, like afterwards. Yes. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so funny. Our first hip hop or second year hip hop routine. So I guess I should just fill anyone in that may yeah. be listening who doesn't know our past. So the three of us all dance at the University of Louisville together on the Ladybird team. And that's where we were on the reality show together. So So Sharp mm-hmm. was the reality show. But so during our time on dance team, we would have a, a competitive hip hop routine we took to nationals every year. And they told us... <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do your Bronco, which is basically like just a hard trick that Riley and yeah. I had never done leading up to it. Cause we came from more of like a competitive dance yeah. realm where we didn't do those kind of tricks. So over spring break or Christmas break, whatever break it was, Riley, Kobe and I went to the SRC, which is like the community <laughs> gym for every college kid. Like it was not dedicated <laughs> to athletes and we're just flailing on our necks, trying to get this Kobe, having Kobe teach us this trick. And I remember I, I at had one point you got a concussion. No, <laughs> probably. But we just kept on going. Yeah, no, I couldn't give up. <laughs> Riley, you wanted to give up and you were like, I'm just not going to be in it. Like, I just, I can't yeah. do it. And we were like, no, Riley, just whip, like go it. back and full send. And you ended no. up doing it. Literally, thank God you guys didn't let me just not be in the dance. You're like, no, that's not an option. Yeah. <laughs> You're getting this yeah. trick. I mean, think about how I, I was my by myself my freshman year. I didn't have anybody. Because, like, Brittany Wright had just left. Her and I weren't close yet. And so it's, like, I don't have anyone else that was, like, studio background, like, as much mm-hmm. as she was um, when I got there. And so I didn't know what a head spring was. I, I to- You thought I did a toe touch before I got there? <laughs> <laughs> no, not. like, how in the world did you teach yourself to do a Bronco? I would have probably killed myself. I'm not kidding. Like, on accident. I- I don't even remember because I have like what Simone Biles got, like that fear of like going backwards. Yeah. I got that a long time ago from doing gymnastics, like a long time ago. So that's why I always only ever did my aerial. I was like, I can do that other stuff, but like, I can't see what's coming from behind me. So like, I just can't even. So yeah. I don't know what it was. Maybe doing it so much on that cheer mat mm-hmm. yeah. made me, yeah, <laughs> it was just kind of like, I all it can always feel that way. And I mean, at the time, I think I had had three concussions by then. So I'm like, what's another one? <laughs> <laughs> what is another one? No, you really took us under your wing when we were a freshman yeah. and you were a sophomore. I just remember being in your Volvo. You'd whip us around <laughs> like our mom. <laughs> yes, I, that was so Volvo. fun. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I have so, you all, I have so many videos of <laughs> late nights of being delirious. Of oh, Lord. Concussion. I, oh, I, like, oh that is like a very protected vault because it, Lord mm-hmm. only knows what is in there. <laughs> I have literally, I have funny videos all the way up until your wedding, like literally all the way up until there. I have stuff all the way. Yeah. Cause I'm like this, that in the photo, I remember for y'all's birthday, I used to always post that photo of y'all when y'all were kids. I think Riley or Rose, <laughs> you had the underwear on your head. I, always, <laughs> I think I saw Jill post it and I screenshotted it and I've kept it ever since. I'm like, oh my god, everything for this. You really like we're never gonna have Kobe on our bad side because she could blackmail us for the rest of our life. Oh, so yeah. what's so funny is that I love when people take funny pictures of me and like funny videos of yeah. me. I 
live for it. <laughs> I went to a concert a few weeks ago with my cousin and it was torrential downpouring after the concert. And we didn't know that. Like I'm seeing full be like face completely done. We walked outside. My face was on the sidewalk. <laughs> of the rain. I shut the sidewalk. <laughs> it has fully washed off and I watched it wash away. <laughs> I, I have to send you the video. It is so bad. Please like, do. You have to post it on yeah, I was like, you have to post it for my birthday. Like, you can't let this go to waste. It's so good. <laughs> that is hysterical. That really wraps the question back to the core because only someone who like I feel like certain people would be like, burn it, never let yeah. that see the light of day. But you're so confident in who you are that I need to, I need to have a little bit of that in me. You have, we it. all need you a little Kobe. Like, yeah. I feel like that, that needs to be on like a bumper sticker. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do too. <laughs> okay. So speaking of so sharp, Rosie just explained mm-hmm. the reality show for anyone who doesn't know Kobe, how did being on so sharp change your college day to day life? I think it made people that didn't know who I was or like only knew me like as a black girl in Lady Birds, like they knew my name now, whether it was like other athletes because I really only hung around with other athletes or if it was like other people on campus. But like it didn't really change on campus as much. It changed a little bit like at work because I was, you know, I was working at 4th Street Live when we were filming. Oh, yeah. And so like people that were coming in town that like I probably wouldn't see on a regular basis, like they would recognize me. Like mm-hmm. I remember I like snuck off to a different state to like go see a boy and I went to this <laughs> I went to his football game and the quarterback's daughter like recognized me and I was like oh my god like oh my god this is a little scary but yeah on campus like not as much I think these people just like knew my name instead of like that that random black girl on the dance <laughs> <laughs> so what moments do you wish people saw on the show that weren't aired Ooh. I'm trying to remember. I wish that they would have seen. Did they? Did we show your 21st birthday? Not really. I mean, no. Yeah, I don't think they even said what it was. There was just like some kind of fight, of course, happening. Of course, but of course. that yeah. was fun. Like in real life, like I wish they yeah. would have that. <laughs> yeah, that um, was actually such a fun night. I feel like they didn't show like and it wasn't there, more like, of the party. Fun. Yeah, like there was there was some stuff that we did that like they were like they never wanted to show. I, obviously, I know it's for the drama, and I can give you the drama, but also like I'm a good time girl. I like to have fun. Yeah, I know. I feel like we would all be like so silly together and like have so much fun. And they didn't show that side of us. It was always just like the cutthroat like drama side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the long nights when we would have to stay after practice and film like our like media breaks or whatever, and like Todd and Brittany would be dancing like. When we'd be like in the corner, like cracking up, like that type of stuff, it like really shows that we do get along. We're like a yeah. big group of sisters. We get along. I can't stand you sometimes. I still love you. <laughs> yes. yes. No, exactly. <laughs> I wish they showed more of like the sisterhood of it. Like, yes, yeah. sisters and girls of totally different walks of life, like regardless of a television show or not, that yeah. are competing for spots in like in are put in like vulnerable situations, of course there's going to be drama and people are going to have different opinions. But I feel like at the end of the day, there was more of the good than the bad, but they really only showed the bad. Of course. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And it's crazy too. Like you would film a scene for an hour or two hours. They'd show two minutes or like they would completely cut it all together. And it's just like, mm-hmm. wait, remember we like filmed that they never showed it. So it's just crazy how much time was spent in yeah. addition to practice, homework, mm-hmm. going to class, being a normal college student, like it was a wild time. How did we even get through it? I think a lot of, I was drinking a lot of wine. I don't know about it. <laughs> no, it's actually crazy though. Like how did we have time? We were already so busy as it was. Mm-hmm. And then you add this TV show in and I remember they'd be like, okay, like you're needed to be at this random restaurant at 1 yeah. p.m. To film this scene, like to your point, Riley, that nine out of 10 times didn't even make the show, but it took up five, six hours of your day in between yeah. like our social life, school and dance. Like they never showed us at Tin Roof and that was so much fun. Oh that my was gosh. I so forgot. fun. That was like so fun. And yeah. I forgot about that night when they came and filmed. They never yeah. showed it. Didn't we like stay after? It. 
we did actually like it turned into the bar yeah yeah, yeah. remember I just milking stuff from them i'm like well if i have to be here early i want a red bull i want gummy bears I want <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my gosh yeah you did um because your girl what was your producers or like the one you worked with kelly kelly oh, i love kelly mm-hmm. i still follow I, her yeah. on instagram i love Same. kelly yeah, she's thriving. And remember there was like that runner guy, I think he was like a PA or something. They would always make him go do like random <laughs> stuff for us. Go like get the girl snacks. Oh, 100%. Yes. Yes, yeah. I actually do remember him. Well, it was funny because I was thinking about the managers or produce our producers, Riley and I had Carrie. I remember uh, she texted me at Tin Roof and said we'll pay you more if you flip your like spill your drink. Wait, I forgot about that. Your drink. I said I'm sorry, no, because I have to live with this rep. Like, even if all the girls at the table know that it's a joke. Yeah. No. I have to sorry. live with it. Yeah. Wait, yeah. I totally forgot. Wasn't she like, we'll pay you more if you spill your drink or flip the table? Yeah, flip the table I, or like throw your drink I in. Probably me. <laughs> Kobe would have yeah. done it. Kobe I for sure would have done it. <laughs> yeah, I was, I think I had to like, I don't even know who, who it was for. Probably like Marissa. Yeah, I've always wanted to flip a table. I would have totally done that. We totally missed our chance. Literally. Or like the awkwardness when like me and Kayla got into our fight in the locker room and then we had to go to El Nepal after. (laughs) Wait, that was the same day. Wait, I know that question's on here. We sat sat next to each other. Me and you, Rose. We were like, this is so awkward. I remember. I remember El Nepal. I could never forget it. But this is a question. I guess we can answer it now just because you brought it up. Um, It's just kind of like a funny one, but quite a few people wanted to know if the scene in the locker room between you and Kayla was real or not. And like, if you can debrief, I think my emotions towards her were real. I don't think the situation was that deep, but I really do believe that like, I probably had like some pent up emotions towards her and I just kind of like washed it away. Like, you know, when you're like, Oh, like they're freshmen or they're sophomores, like whatever. Like, I think that's kind of what it was. And I just like mm-hmm. let loose and like went off, but also at the same time, like I don't play about my family. I don't care if it's real or fake. And so it's like, you say one, well, like, it's kind of like, and I remember Rose, I asked you this the very first day I met you, we were talking about cousins, but I was like, I don't care if we're first, second, third or removed. Like I don't play about my family. So like, yeah. we're either going to get it or, and take it and we're going to move on. Like, and I've told multiple people that before, like on the team, like I will knock out, drag out, like cuss you out, but I'll be over it in like 15, 20 minutes, maybe even a day and we can move on. And no, and now it's crazy because like, I love Kayla every time I see her and like, I hang out with her the most at weddings or like, we'll take shots randomly when I see her. Like it's so much, it's the trauma connected. For you guys sure. bonded over the, the trauma of that. that. 100%. So, and I think, too, if we were older, like I say that all the time, if we were older filming the show, I think things would have been so different. Oh, yeah. So different. Absolutely. Absolutely. So for someone who does it, is listening and is like, wait, what the heck happened in this mm-hmm. scene? Like, can you kind of explain what yeah. it was? I'm trying to remember. I think, like, Kayla said something to Taylor, who's my cousin, about... Um, something in the routine and then also like she we obviously me and Kayla like butt heads all the time like mm-hmm. in real in real life like without that show we used to butt heads but also at the same time which is so crazy we would butt heads but she would come to me for so much so it was kind of just like that like dynamic where like we, sisters yeah like I can't stand you today but don't forget <laughs> to you know talk to me tomorrow yeah. Um, <laughs> and, so yeah I think that's what it was like she just said something off the wall like out of her ass to Taylor and I don't know if that was her producer saying something to her or like right. if she actually felt that way you know what I'm saying but I I don't know for anyone out there like don't let people talk about your family it's yeah. not who it is. <laughs> and so that just yeah that just like set me off like I said it could have been so minuscule the actual yeah. problem but the pent up just like let loose well, I remember vividly, I literally, for some, I don't know how, and I don't know if I could find this on my phone, but if I can, I will absolutely post it on the Drinks on Us page after this episode airs. But I pulled my phone out when it was happening. Yeah. And I remember it was like, it was bad. It was so bad. But like, I'm like, you can like see the corner of my face, like, 
just like add on to yourself at one point and it was like I looked at you and you were like it was like you were out of your body you're like the difference between (laughs) me and Taylor I'm like you and your sister like I forget what you said but you oh my gosh whatever you said was like so iconic I don't even know if it made it to the show but the reason I'm bringing this part up that I remember that I don't even know if you two remember is we left like Uh thought we could leave because we like did the scene that needed to happen in the locker room. And then Uh Brian came in the the executive producer and was like, listen, I know y'all want to go home. Like if you could just cooperate and give us what we need before we wrap, then like this makes it easier for everyone. Basically saying like it wasn't enough because no one, like the tension wasn't coming to this big head that he wanted it to, to, wanted it to. We had to go do it all over again. Yeah. And those little things add to your, like frustration and your patience and your emotions. We've been there for so long. And so at that point, I think it was just like a perfect storm of so many Mm -hmm. things. Um, and he sure got what he wanted. He was like, all right, thank you very much. Kobe. You get extra. (laughs) Yep. 100%. And my mom was there. She had, she was waiting in the stands like forever for us to be done. And I remember I came storming out the first time and I was like, where's my mom? And like told her what happened. And then we went back in and did it again and came back out. And then I had to do like the little, whatever it's like, not green screen, but like the little like one-off interview. What were those called? Confessional. Confessional. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, can I cuss on here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I was like, <laughs> fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you all. I remember when it aired my multiple people in my family called me or like didn't and were so upset I'm like you think that that's the worst thing I've ever done like sometimes I want to say that to you my grandma didn't talk to me for six months neither did my dad I'm like you all I I've cussed like a sailor my whole life you knew about it you just never heard me do it and I think that was like she's saying it on tv I'm like I'm trying to win an Oscar okay <laughs> I actually feel like I need to go back and watch it to see like what made it to the show. Cause I actually don't even remember what actually made it. And now I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to put it on our Instagram for everyone to see just to give it context. I, yeah. And I have no, more I, videos too. I think there's like some things that like I remember happening that never aired. I think yeah. I remember those things more than I remember yes. what actually was on the show. Me too. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that too, Rose, I want to go back and watch it because I'm like, I need refreshed. Um, but kind of going off of that, how did the pressure of so sharp affect your mental health? I think I knew it was a character that I was playing essentially, but like a kind of like Beyonce and Sasha Pierce. Like I knew it was an extension of me yeah. Um, because like I acted and stuff as a kid and so and I also was like trying like again trying to like get as much out of them as I could I'm like I'm SAG eligible like all this stuff <laughs> but um I think that on top of everything else I had going on I think as an isolated situation it wasn't bad it was yeah. everything else I had going on outside of that that like it made it so much worse like I yell from the rooftops. The first episode is not what you think I'm crying about. Like that is not what happened. That was not why I was furious. It was not why I was upset. And I can't even talk about it on the show. Like I couldn't even say why I was mad. And so it like fueled it even more. And so I think like having a relationship that you couldn't show on television, dealing with that relationship and the ups and downs with that, trying to figure out if I was going to go to grad school or if I was just going to be done and you know graduate in December trying to figure out if I did go to grad school was I going to stay was I going to move all of that it was just it was it was crazy and then also like I feel like because we were at the beginning of what it meant to be like an influencer like flat committee was still a thing like we were doing we were doing our like we would get boxes of stuff and then we would come in the locker room and like shoot for each other like because we didn't know what we were doing wait that is so (laughs) funny I still remember us all filming or like taking photos of each other with those sticky boobs. I <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, what, what were they called? I sneaky still have mine. Yes. Sne- <laughs> I still have mine. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, I don't know where mine went. I definitely don't still Wait, have it. And remember we all got that same whitening little contraption that we'd put Yay. in our mouth with like the little plug that plugged into our phone. We all, what brand was that? Oh my God. I wonder if it's still 
deep on our Instagrams. I can't remember. Oh, I think I still have it. I Not think flat tummy gone. tea. <laughs> Wait, I forgot tea about flat sure. tummy tea. We said we are influencers. We are. I was so pissed that I didn't get one when y'all did. I was like, <laughs> I know they got more followers than me, but damn. Like, <laughs> what Wait. Then I realized that like, it was like stupid. <laughs> So that stupid. is so funny. It, it it is. It's so wild just to think like what the um trajectory of the show could have been if it was a different era of social media. Mm-hmm. Like if yeah. things were going on TikTok, like if TikTok was even a thing or if yeah. like I think it's so wild to think back. I don't know why I think about this all the time, but the fact that do. like our routines never made like we never posted our routines on social media. Like Mm-mm. we didn't really share any part of like dancing other than like a snapshot at a yeah. game. And it was like a super curated photo. Like that was just like how Instagram was then. Yeah. yeah it was like, so we didn't even put any thought into it. No. And now I'm like, girls, like get in your bag, like that are still on dance scenes. And like, you have so much that you can, know. you know, get from it. But so, yeah, I had, I think like all of that, like influencing, trying to figure, like my parents were like, well, how do we, you know, make this lucrative? And I was dealing with different lawyers and all of that stuff. Cause like we saw obviously what happened with dance mom and my parents come from like a different age of like, we just outsource people to figure out how to do this type of stuff. But like yeah. influencing like wasn't a thing. Like yeah. no one was really doing that. Like the girls, before we're getting like actual brand campaigns like what I'm doing now is like a job like it was completely different so I think like all of that took a toll on me and once I was done I really want to say that once the show was over I personally feel like I was a lot nicer once the show was done with and it was over and I could like breathe I feel like Mm -hmm. we were always on edge from like the producers Mm -hmm. telling us and like Todd was obviously hard on us and like you have cameras in your face. They want you to do things. They want you to flip tables. It's like, I feel like it was always, we were all always on edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we just like so late. Yeah. And I feel like at the end of the day, like we wanted to soak in being in college and like having Mm -hmm. fun and having relationships and like going out together. Like I think at the end of the, like I remember us being so fired up about having to like do stuff in Daytona after we yeah. finished. Cause it's oh, like, those yeah. are such special moments. Those so like I think core memories. Yeah, yeah. It's like such a fine balance. It's like, we don't get to relive. Like we don't have an endless mm-hmm. timeline here in college. So we, mm-hmm. we want to wrap so we can go out to the bars or like we yeah. want to wrap so we can go see our boyfriends. Like it was, I think that was the hardest thing to balance all of that because we were at their beck and call. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like having to move locations and all of that. I remember just like filming nationals that year. So much was different for us. Like mm-hmm. we were in a different hotel. We were further away. We were practicing in random places. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it just was so much. It was like, it was out of our norm. And all mm-hmm. we wanted to do when we were done was like get a fishbowl and like not remember the day. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh. So the, just like you talking about that, like gave me a little bit of anxiety. Like I remember <laughs> filming at that random place where we had to bus to yeah. and yes. Todd was like extra mean and yes. it like caused all of us to be on edge. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. I yelled yeah. at Kelly that night. I remember. And then I remember Todd said, oh, <laughs> he used no. to always say this about like Marissa and Kayla when we have to like change formations in a weird way and I think Kayla coming from like um jazz to hip-hop her and I had like very long paths we had to take but obviously she is a whole foot taller than me like she has much (laughs) longer legs than I do I can go a further distance because I'm quick but she's innately gonna get there before me Mm -hmm. and I remember one time like while we were there he was like it's all fun and games until Kayla can't get to her spot and I said oh no it is all fun and games until I don't get to where I'm supposed to be. I've been in the back this whole dance. <laughs> if I can't get to my spot, then it's a problem. And he was like, okay, well, let's try it again. <laughs> oh Wait, my I don't even, like, I literally feel like I have short-term memory loss from that time because I don't remember, like, any of that stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know what it, maybe I just, like, blocked it out, but that is hilarious. I don't even remember that happening. I lashed out for sure because he was like, she said something. It was like she couldn't get to her spot or something like that. And I'm like... You are literally a giant. <laughs> Just use your legs. Like, yeah. You know, oh I, said, I always said off the wall shit. <laughs> so a lot of people wanted to know this, actually. How Ooh. strong was the rivalry between you and Taylor? Ooh, this is something that I've been thinking about since I we first started talking about me coming on. Because 
growing up, I think we maybe competed against each other once or twice. Like our senior year was probably the one time where we competed against each other the most. But growing up, we never really did. Like our, we just never went into the same competition. And so it wasn't really like a rivalry. Like I really do believe like Todd saw something or like the producers saw something that they could yeah. have like milked. But like it totally. really wasn't anything there that we ever felt. Like right. I, I know from my end, like I just never felt like that we were going against each other ever in our lives. Like I begged her to come to Louisville from Hofstra. Yeah. So like obviously like I was competing against somebody that I wouldn't feel like I wouldn't want them to come to where I went to school, you know, like I wanted right. her to be there because I knew she could thrive. And then it just like the circumstances like just took themselves like where it did. So I think on camera it it you you saw like it made sense or whatever, yeah. but like in real life it really wasn't like that. No, like, and being friends with you guys, like, we never felt like there was any rivalry. Like, we were all best yeah. friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was kind of, like, together. the same thing. Like, I never felt a competition or, like, rivalry between Marissa and myself. Like, we yeah. feel like we had different strengths. Like, we were such yeah. different dancers. Like, there was things that maybe I could be better at than her and a lot of things that she was better than me. But oh my gosh, they fed and fed and fed on it. That I'm like, is there something here that like, I don't know from my side. So I just think it's just like a perfect recipe for reality television. I'm like, if anything, like I have been like national season for me always got tricky because I loved lyrical so much. Lyrical and jazz so much, but like, it just wasn't the lyrical and jazz that like was meant for team routine. I guess right. that I liked or that I was good at. Like mine mm-hmm. was real sassy and you know, it was very emo. like our jazz routines were very emotional. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, it totally. wasn't like heels or like sassy jazz, like I'm good at. And I just couldn't wrap my brain around like how I always like ended up in the back or different things like that. So like those were more of the things that I was worried about. I wasn't really ever worried about anybody else on the team. Cause I mm-hmm. obviously knew like I had my strengths, like as we kept going and that's when, like, you realize that, like, dances are a work in progress. And I yeah. guess we're just so used to, like, I mean, up until I was a junior, formation still, like, blew me for a loop. I'm like, we're, I'm so used to being all over the damn stage. Like, what is, what are we guiding to? Like, what does this even mean? You know? Yeah. Getting our formation it? was a crazy experience, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so different. I feel like people, maybe now, because of the evolution of dance team, but dance team in growing up in a competitive dance studio are entirely different worlds. Like completely different. And it, I don't think you hear like, Oh, I'm like going to dance in college and mm-hmm. like to the naked eye of someone who doesn't know dance. Like they don't think it's a big change. It was so, so different. So yeah, it definitely took, I think all three of us and Kayla for that matter, who came from yeah. the studio. Like it's, it's just so different. Um, I never knew like how serious formations were and like looking like how you gauged if you were in the right mm-hmm. spot and like depth between the lines, like all that kind of stuff. I feel like it was kind of a free for all in competitive yeah. dance. <laughs> totally. I ne- like I never would have. And just like also being a coach too. I think that like opened up my eyes differently. Mm-hmm. Cause like I would be coaching with like Audrey or Brittany and Audrey could do, she could know the amount of people on a team and know how many lines they wanted in the formation and could tell you the exact number of people in each line. I'm like, bitch, that mental math is some crackhead (laughs) shit and it's so good. You need to be somewhere else than here. (laughs) 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 It's crazy. Mental math is not my thing. I can tell you something in the front, but I don't got it. Yeah, not our strength. (laughs) That's why why we're in this profession. (laughs) Right, (laughs) right. Makes sense. (laughs) Kobe, what is your favorite memory of Rose and Rye? Oh. I'm scared. (laughs) My absolute favorite is my, I was thinking I was going into my sophomore year and you guys were staying with me. Remember I had to live out of a hotel for like two weeks. I knew this is what you were going (laughs) to say. (laughs) And you guys stayed with me for a few nights. And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> was it, Rose, was it a video or was it you doing it at while well, at that night? She was doing it. I think it was okay. me doing it. So, okay, obviously Rose and Riley has been friends since the womb <laughs> and they have so many inside jokes. And so <laughs> I'm laying like tired, ready to go to bed. 
and <laughs> Rose and Riley like got up to do like this like Broadway production of <laughs> <laughs> like a meme for me and I cracked up laughing it was funny the first time <laughs> but then Rose kept doing the like sound effect. And it's like when you're going to get your teeth cleaned and they do like the suction cup and it's like, <sighs> and Rose kept doing it over and over and over again. And Riley was taking a video of her doing it. And it's like on the fourth time, Rose goes, <laughs> and all of a sudden you hear me go, Rose! <laughs> and we just busted out like it's to this day. One and it's definitely I feel like it's a had to be there type of thing. So like you yeah. probably have to share the video on social. But like yeah. I was ready to like kick your ass out on the street. I wanted you to stop making that noise so bad. But like <laughs> who in the world did we think we were, right? Like just coming in and just being acting damn fools. Like we were creating videos for like what would be TikTok today with no yes. TikTok just for yes. us. One hundred percent. Like Riley and I would remember even like every nationals, there would be something silly at the end of the night that Riley would have me filming or we would be filming at mm-hmm. the end of the night and all of our hotel excursions. And it's just yes. so funny because it's just such, it's, it was just for us, which is yeah. kind of cute that it we actually, makes it better. yeah, I know like good for us for doing it just for fun. <laughs> Y'all are the definition of like, do it for the men. Like what I always say is that y'all are the definition of that. And I love that about y'all and y'all friendship so much. <laughs> the videos that I have of you, Rose, I remember fifth, on my fifth year, we were getting ready to go do team routine and you kept doing one of the, one of the moves that we do. And it was like, come on, let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> hit it, hit it. I still, I remember that video. We were like, I feel like at that point, like, it's like, there's nothing more we can do for this dance. Like, let's just have fun and keep things light because we just got our ass handed to us for the last 24 hours straight. Literally. So I'm like, I'm just trying to keep things light. Maybe have Cheryl let us do it one last time full out. Please, Lord. Rose, (laughs) you were always the one to make Cheryl laugh and like light in the mood. Once she laughed at you, we'd all be like, okay, we're good. We're in the clear. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was between Rose making her laugh all the time and me convincing her during hell week to only make us do like so many full outs today. Like it was strategic. It was. Yes. It literally was. That's so yeah. funny. We'll have to find yeah. that. If you have that video, you'll have to oh. send it. Of course I have it. I can. I have like a Dropbox folder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So someone's going to pay you for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ever need blackmail? I have. They're funny videos, so. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, Kobe, everyone wants to know, what have you been up to since post-college and what are you up to now? Yeah, so I can do what I'm up to now because it's the most recent. I started a new job today. Woo-hoo! Today! She rushed home to be on the podcast. So thank I you, did. Kobe. Of course, anything for you girls. Um, I'm the marketing manager for a hospitality company um, here in Dallas. And so Queen. That's, the, that's what I've been up to recently. Um, well, I became like a full-time content creator out of nowhere last year. And so that's also like my full-time job too. I guess you could say like I have two full-time jobs. So... I'm posting constantly on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. Um, I moved to Dallas. I guess that's something that most, some people may not know. But yeah, mm-hmm. I moved to Dallas maybe four years ago um, after grad school. Moved back home to Nashville for about nine months and realized that like I love my parents, but like I really love y'all when I don't live with y'all. So <laughs> I have to move. <laughs> yeah. And so I moved here, um, and I've been here ever since. And yeah, just everything digital, social media, marketing, all of that has been like consumed with my life. You're, You're so, so good, good at, at it. it. Thank- <laughs> well, Jake, you owe me a soda. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, girly pop. I'm still very much single, but like, do you guys have any like brothers or like, Ooh, should we have people write in? Yeah. If you like, they have to be, I'm looking for a guy in finance. I'm looking for a guy in finance. finance. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So do crew, big jobs, do your thing and Mm -hmm. let's get Kobe a man. Please. Thank you. That'd be so fun. Have you seen like sisters and friends where they do like a fake, like a faux bachelor, bachelorette, sorry. Maybe we um, wouldn't. What if we do that at your boutique hotel? Oh, that would be cute. Oh, that would be so cute on the rooftop. Okay. Like everybody remember, 
speaking of Bachelor and Bachelorette, Rose, remember when you and Ryan first started dating and I was like, you guys were like a year in and I was like, all right, I know the hashtag for the wedding. I know this. I know this. I never watched The Bachelor ever in my life, but hashtag Ryan got the final rose. Yeah. And that was literally my theme for my Bachelorette. I Kobe, you're so creative. I know. You know, I try. I do what I can for the people. Oh, <laughs> wow. Nostalgic. I love it. Well, speaking of what we do for the people, uh, we have some really good submissions for our girls room segment, which Kobe okay. girls room is advice. So people okay. write in looking for advice and we kind of just talk through it. And sometimes we give really good advice. Sometimes I don't know, Rose, I feel like we're <laughs> on the, on the edge, but these are some good ones today. So first okay. one, okay. Hi, girlies. Love your pod so much. I remember a few episodes ago, you said that your college degree was in communications. Do you feel like there are a lot of jobs to choose from with this degree and it doesn't just limit you to doing one thing? I'm in my late 20s now and went to college for two years from 2016 to 2018 studying communications. But at the time, I thought college wasn't for me and I went to cosmetology school. I have now been a hairstylist for the past six and a half years, have my own business and all of the things, but want to go back to school to finish my degree in communications because as I get older, being a hairstylist with zero benefits, no PTO and an inconsistent schedule and salary is not my jam anymore. My question to you is, do you feel like communications is a pretty good degree to get? Or if you could go back, would you change your major? Thanks so much. And I look forward to your input. Go off queen. Ooh, do you guys want me to go first? Yeah, you can yeah. go first. Okay. I'm going to have an unpopular opinion, but as all three of us do have the same degree in communications I personally personally believe that the degree is a little bit too broad um just like in itself um if you can go on like if you can go to a university has tracks within their college of like arts and sciences within that communications degree I think that's really smart so like communications degree but like an emphasis on PR or like an emphasis on marketing or an emphasis on creative I know that they're doing so many more social media classes now or like an emphasis on branding like, excuse me, things like that. I feel like I had such a hard time. I knew what I wanted to do with my degree, but I had such a hard time like trying to figure out like where my sweet spot was because I felt like I could do everything. And so, but I feel like with being a hairstylist, you could cut a cost down with going back to get that degree with one of those specified traits because then you don't have to pay like a social media manager. You don't have to pay a brand manager, like any of that type of stuff. If you want to keep doing it for a while. And then let's say 10 years down the road, you have your degree, but you also have your license in cosmetology. You can go work for a hair care brand, or you could, you know, start That's an true. e-commerce brand and do and sell digital products on like how to do branding and things like that. So like, I think it's like a good caveat to have, but I am very yeah. pro have a trade. I think it's very smart that she went to cosmetology school and just like didn't give up when she realized college like wasn't her jam. Yeah. No, I agree. I actually think that's really good. I um I know we say like communications opens the door mm-hmm. for if you don't know what you want to do, but you know you want it to be in that realm. But because like you said, Kobe, like she's already done the hair scene and like at this point doesn't want to do it right now, even though I loved your advice of like using that to her advantage, maybe down the road to have a niche, maybe figure out what you, what would interest you. And in terms of communication, like, is it PR? Is it something with marketing? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a social media manager or something? Because then once you do that, you could hone in on like the niche part of communication. So you are set up to go right into that field post graduating. Yeah. Totally agree. I think communications has also evolved. Like you were saying, Kobe, there's so many like social media and like brand management and there's Mm. so much more now to it where you can definitely hone in on something if you know, like kind of the direction you're wanting to go. But my communications degree is strictly communications and I liked that it was broad just because I had no idea what I wanted to do. So hopefully like you can think about, you know, if you know the direction you're wanting to go, but I feel like we all landed in a pretty good spot with our communications degree. Yeah. Yeah. No, for, for sure. sure. If okay. I had to go back, I would be a nurse. What? Yeah. Really? Only because like the job security. Not yeah. Not the job for 10 months like really <laughs> altered your girl's brain. So yeah. Anything yeah. that like was job security. So like a nurse or I would have tried a little bit harder in math or <laughs> gone, <laughs> gone to be a scientist like I originally thought out to do. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. that's why I think 
to my point, like doing a trade, I think it's super mm-hmm. important with the way that the economy is like ebbing and flowing. You always have something totally. to fall back on. Yeah. Great advice. Okay. Next one. Girls, I need relationship advice. I've been with my boyfriend for five years. We live together and he's my best friend. However, he only feels like my best friend and not my romantic partner anymore. I've told him many times for the past year, I need physical intimacy and flirting from him. And it happens once. And then it's a dry spell again. It makes me feel insecure. Like what's wrong with me that he wouldn't want to pursue me. I'm always the one to initiate too. My girlfriends told me to give him a final ultimatum. And if nothing changes within a month, then to finally break up. I've been so open and honest. And I told him to be open with me too. And tell me if there's anything I can do to help as well as he says, if I, sorry, if there's anything I can do to help as well as, but he says it's a him thing. <laughs> sorry. I read that in the worst tone. <laughs> no, I got it's it. It's literally so scary and messing. It's literally so scary and messy though, because we just got a puppy together a month ago and we lived together oh, and I really no. do love him, but what's a relationship without physical intimacy? He feels like just a roommate. What would you do? Love the pod, by the way. Sorry, guys. I jacked that one up. You get the gist. <laughs> okay. From somebody who hasn't been in a relationship in a very long time, Dave, he is telling you and also showing you that either he's just not that into you anymore or I hate to say it, like maybe he's cheating maybe, but I think if you're wanting something more out of your partner, and you vocalized it, and it's not happening, think of it the same way as like a platonic friendship, like with your girlfriend, or like with a job. If you've expressed, you know, this makes me feel this way, and I'm not getting the reciprocity out of it from you that I need to, and that's the only way that this is going to work, if it's because relationships are a partnership in some aspects. So if I can't get the same thing from you, and it's not always 50-50, like it's 80-20, but, or in different, you know, percentages, but it's the way it moves back and forth if I can't get that from you and I'm begging you for it, it's never going to come, you know, and you're going to, you're going to spend more time begging him to be better for you. And like, you're going to think back, like I wasted those, the good years, you know, like I could have just been like, all right, you didn't give me what I asked for and like move on. But yeah, you guys can speak to that puppy thing. That's why I don't get joint things with men. Yeah. I, first off, I'm so sorry because this is really sad and yeah. it breaks my heart because obviously you love him and like you're trying to voice like where you feel like your relationship needs work. Um, but if it's like this now and there's no effort and he's like not trying to be better, like you have a, if you're going to commit to each other for life, like you have a lifetime where only bigger stresses and harder mm-hmm. things are going to come in between that so if it's like where it's at now it'd be very hard for me to see it not going in a negative direction for the years and years to come um and I say that like I can understand that's really really hard to like walk away from someone but it feels like I'm like wondering what his justification is of like it's a it's a me thing Mm. like maybe he's sharing more behind the scenes that you didn't share with us but he's a man. Like I agree with Kobe's like something, maybe he shared with you what that issue is, but there's gotta be some reason whether, yeah, like you said, Kobe, he's lost feelings or attraction for you, or there's something worse happening on, which I hope it's not the case. Yeah. Um, and then quickly before Riley goes to touch on the dog situation, it makes things so, so, so tough. Um, I don't know if you guys like split the cost of it, cost of the dog, because at the end of the day, sharing a dog is not going to work longevity. If you guys don't end up together, um, like maybe you can try it to like wean the person who's going to lose the dog off like the first couple months. Like you can see him (laughs) every now and then, but like, I think, if it's his issue and he's not doing something that can evolve your relationship, you should get the dog taking the dog down mass. I'm I'm taking the dog. dog. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I totally agree with both of you girls. And I just want to say, don't let the dog be the reason that you stay in the relationship. If you're not happy, like, things will work out and you'll figure it out. So hopefully we're giving you, you know, the little push that you might need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oftentimes as women, we like, 
want to believe that we can fix anything, not just fix a man, whatever. Like, yeah, we want to believe that we can fix any situation because innately, I think women think that like we're super women in that aspect. But like, mm-hmm. if he is telling you it, it, it's on me, like it's nothing to do with you, it's almost like you've got to believe him at face value type of thing. Totally agree. Yeah. And I do like the friend advice of like, maybe you you give him like one more ultimatum, lay everything mm-hmm. out on the line. And if it's nothing, like it's not what you had hoped for, like as hard as it is, like to Kobe's point, like it's going to end at some point. So just face it head on and move on. So you do have time to go find your next person. You got to stay right. on business, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last submission. I've been insecure about my broad shoulders for quite some time now. I grew up as a dancer, mostly classical ballet, and I always knew my body was different than my peers. I was always skinny, but my broad shoulders made my top half look larger than the other girls. It's never something anyone brought up while I was growing up, and I thought it was just me being picky of my body. I started dating a guy in October, and he is the one person who has pointed out how large my shoulders are, deepening the already existing insecurity that I have in my body because now I feel that what I was insecure about for years is actually true and not just me being paranoid about it. I tell him it's an insecurity of mine. And he says that he's not going to tell me otherwise, because that would be lying. And that it's my job to not let it bother me. Am I the asshole? Or is he? (laughs) Hey, girl, get your shit and go. (laughs) Cut it out. He has to go. Send him back to his mama. Because how dare he? No, literally, how dare he? I can't tell you that your shoulders aren't broad because it's the truth. What if I tell you what your insecurities are and reinforce those to you? I'm, I'm baffled. Like, yeah. BFFR boy. I'd be like, yeah. Like to Kobe's point, like, do you want me to say that your arms are wimpy? (laughs) Cause it's the truth. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you otherwise. Cause it's the truth. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, No, it's a hundred percent. Not you girl. Ow. I feel like he is showing you his true colors and like, he doesn't seem like a very nice man. At all. What's so crazy is that I was talking to my cousin a few weeks ago about a topic kind of like this. And sometimes we really realize that there are men in this world who really truly do not like women, like as friends or like find like beauty in women that other men do. And it comes out in these types of ways. Like mm-hmm. they'll love bomb you or they'll, they'll butter you up and like, you know, work to your strengths. But then the moment you're like, does this dress look bad on me? You're like, yeah, like it absolutely does. Like, I don't know why you would choose that. And it's like, I'm looking for someone that's like my confidant and my best friend and like my everything. Be honest with me for sure. But yeah. like also realize that like at the end of the day, when I'm emotional, you're the person that I want to feel safe with. So like, yeah. if I can't ask you like a bare basic question without feeling like you don't really like me for real. Like I'll never confide in you or like never trust you or like never love you the same, you know? Yeah. Right. No, I agree. I think there is a difference between being able to have someone who can push you to be better, but that does not go for this situation, especially Mm -hmm. having known that he probably knows that that's like a deep insecurity for you. So I just, yeah. And it's so interesting that you brought that up, Kobe, about like some men just don't love and appreciate women because Riley and I talked about the whole like Cassie um, Mm -hmm. situation and her husband's statement literally said that. Like if you can talk to women or like do horrible things to women, like you just don't, you don't love women. And I just, I really think this man, the fact that he not only said it, but then said he won't change his mind because it's the truth is, no x it's a big red flag for me yeah Yeah. gotta go okay well i'm glad we're all on the same page mama yeah send him back (laughs) kick him to the curb (laughs) Mm -hmm. well i think that concludes our happy hour kobe that was so much fun thank you for joining us thank you so much for coming on yeah i love this you guys have been so good i'm so proud of you guys this is honestly so good i hear about the podcast from like people who have no idea that i'm friends with you guys so I'm very happy for you. This is going great. And I can't wait, can't wait to watch you guys like do so much more. I was thinking about a tour yesterday. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. We like the yeah. way you think. Yeah, we you also know, told Kobe. I always give you the good ideas. <laughs> yes. We also told Kobe that we need to do a 
quote unquote business trip in Dallas. So we can mm-hmm. have a little reunion weekend, but Kobe, yes. before um, we end, where can everybody find you on social media? If they're not already following you, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at K S Jarman, J A R M O N. Um, it's literally my high school email address. So embarrassing. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else good enough. <laughs> K.S. Jarman. And then on YouTube, it's Kobe, K-O-B-I-E, Simone, S-Y-M-O-N-E. And it's always like linked and tagged and all my like bios and whatnot. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so Yay. much for coming and spending your first night after your job with us. We know yes. time is so valuable. So we appreciate you. Absolutely. Love you. I love you guys <laughs> so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a review, follow us, all the things. Yes. And that was such a fun episode. I'm going to leave us with just the cheers to just like great friendships and great conversation and girlhood. I think that's a good toast. What do you think? Love it. Okay. Cheers, you guys. And thank you so much to our girl, Kobe. And um, yeah, follow her and we'll have some awesome content over on our socials. So see you over there. And we will see you, of course, you guys, same time, same place next week. Love you.